So for some reason or another, you've made your way to my channel and you're in the market for a 3D printer. Now, whether it be your first printer or your 50th printer, it doesn't matter. You're kind of overwhelmed by all the options on the market. But that's okay because luckily I have personally printed a lot of stuff up to this point. And today I wanna to share with you guys my personal best and favorite 3D printers I've used up to this point. Let's take a look. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to my channel. My name's Frank. And if it's your first time here, thank you for making your way onto this video. Hopefully I can teach you something. First off, if you're not familiar with me, what makes me qualified to even talk about something like this? Well, you'll see here an absolute laundry list of all the printers I've tested, used, abused, and reviewed. And while that doesn't even begin to approach the vast amount of printers that are actually available on the market, I like to think up to this point, I have a good understanding on what makes a good printer versus a bad printer. Now, anytime through this video, I use best or favorite or top, it's gonna be all about my own personal opinion. I wanna get that out of the way right here. There is no perfect 3D printer. There is no best 3D printer. What does exist is the best 3D printer for you. Now, in this video, I'm gonna be covering three, maybe four printers that I think will help you on your 3D printing journey journey. Now I'm not going to be really talking about the turnkey thousands of dollars 3D printer. Printers from Creality, FL Sun, printers that are more in the hobby level where you might have to do just a little bit of building and get your hands dirty sometimes, which I actually encourage and it teaches you more about the hobby. But I've been talking way too much already guys. Let's roll into it. The first printer I want to talk about is the Creality Ender 3. Now I know right off the bat this is going to stir up a little bit of controversy and I want to explain why. Now I'm not here to promote Creality. This isn't a paid or sponsored video by them. I genuinely love this printer because it gives you nothing. It gives you the bare bones to make a 3D printer work and get prints off of the bed. You can literally pick these up for $100 at Micro Center if you use their first time buyer discount. The biggest thing I love about this printer is it teaches you how to 3D print. This isn't a turnkey printer. You're not gonna unbox it, plug it in and go. It's not a microwave. This is something you're gonna need to build. An Ender 3 out of box for the first time user, you might be looking at about an hour to two hours to assemble it, but if you pay attention and build it, you're gonna be a lot more familiar with the machine. And because it isn't all enclosed, it isn't complicated. It looks a little scary to some people. I understand that. However, there isn't a lot going on. You have a screen, you have a power supply, you have a USB port, you have an extruder, a hot end, some belts and cables. For those looking to get into the hobby, get their feet wet and get a better understanding of 3D printing, in my opinion, this is the best machine to get. Now, don't get me wrong. I understand there are multiple versions of this printer. For example, the top tier Creality Ender 3 S1. I believe they're about to release an S1 Pro version. Now this is gonna give you all of the upgrades that you could possibly want on the base Ender 3. However, it's gonna come with a bigger price tag. Going from this printer to that printer, the, really the only difference is features and ease of use. Both of these printers can put out the same quality. However, the S1 or the upgraded versions are easier to extract that quality from. They have more features, they're a little more user-friendly, and they already come upgraded, but you're gonna pay for it. Heck, there's even cheaper clones of the Ender 3 like the Voxelab Aquila, which offers pretty much the same thing, and the price might vary and there's dozens of these across the market. But at the end of the day, they're all basically Ender 3 clones. I'm not talking about the Prusa Mark 3s. I'm not paying $1,000 for a printer this size. And again, that's my personal opinion. But I've extracted quality out of my almost stock Ender 3 that rivals the Prusas. Personally, I've had this particular Ender 3 for almost two and a half years, and I haven't had to change anything on it. Now, I've done upgrades to it. I have an all-metal extruder. I have a Bowden Capricorn tube. I changed the bed out, and now there is a silent board on it to make it quieter, though now I don't need it and it is printed reliably and flawlessly that entire time. The only errors or mistakes I've had in it mostly are my own fault. Slicer settings, print settings, maybe I got a little bit too ambitious, didn't clean the bed, didn't level it. Again, most of it's user-induced issues. I can't vouch for this printer enough or some variation of it, and I think it pays off in the long run more than any other printer you're gonna experience. Except maybe like building an old Annette A8, but I don't really wanna risk a fire, so. <laughs> so if you're looking to dive into the hobby, get your feet wet, but you don't wanna break the bank, Look into an Ender 3 or one of its upgraded variants. Hey guys, so I want to take a minute to talk to you about today's sponsor, Keeps. Keeps is an online subscription service that helps men keep their hair. Doctor recommended hair loss treatment that's clinically proven to help combat hair loss. Treatment plans are affordable, typically half the cost of pharmacy prices. 24 hour customer support, a year of unlimited messaging, and most Keeps customers see results within the first six months of starting. So two out of three guys will experience some type of hair loss by the time they're 35. And while it's totally natural, you can help prevent it with Keeps. You can get quality expert care without ever visiting a doctor's office or pharmacy. A network of expert prescribers, advisors, and care specialists to help you make your hair loss goals a reality. 
Each treatment plan comes with a full year of unlimited messaging so you can connect with your doctor about anything, anytime. Whether you're just looking to prevent hair loss, stimulate hair growth, or take better care of the hair you have, Keeps has you covered. Their physicians will help you select the right product and treatment for your own specific condition and hair goals. Hair loss stops with Keeps, so to get 50% off your first order, go to keeps.com slash franklybuilt or click the link down in the description. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash franklybuilt. Thank you Keeps for sponsoring this video. Let's get back to it. Next up, we're going to talk about my personal favorite 3D printer, the Creality. CR10S Pro V2. I could fill up multiple videos easily talking about this printer. I genuinely don't know where to begin when talking about how reliable this printer has been and the quality it's delivered for over two years now. You can actually go check this video right here about my initial review of this printer and my opinions have only gotten stronger. I love this thing. This is the printer I recommend to people who just want a good out of box printer that works, is very easy to assemble, has a large build volume and is pretty user friendly. Realistically, if you rush and understand how to build this thing, it'll take you about five minutes. And that's including cutting the box open, putting in a couple screws, plugging it in, and turning it on. A first time user, it might take you about 20 to 30 minutes to get it unboxed and plugged in. Everything you see here and tons of stuff you don't was printed on one out of two of my Creality CR10S Pro V2s. They are big enough to do full size helmets. They're accurate enough to do print in place. It comes preloaded with a silent board, touch screen, a really nice bed, all metal extruder, Bowden Capricorn tube, dual Z axis. I, I love this thing. I absolutely love this printer. It is the only printer in my arsenal that I trust to actually do a Black Panther helmet in FDM. Normally you gotta resin print this to get any type of good quality out of it, but this thing nailed it. Each one of these Stormbreaker pieces took about three to four days each. This hammerhead took four days and I printed four of them in a row nonstop on my Pro V2s while the other one did the axe heads. It didn't miss a beat. Start print, leave, come back, remove, start print, leave, rinse and repeat. Now I know I've talked about the Ender 5 Plus and I really don't want to bring it up into the room right now. So here's a picture of it. Cool. I do love this printer, but it is a little bit more hands on. You are going to need to upgrade some things out of box and it will be a little bit more temperamental. Though it's a little larger, though it's a little faster, this still wins in my mind. And this is a great printer. So if you're looking for something a little bit bigger than an Ender 3, this is definitely the printer to go with. Now, before we move on, I want to talk about this thing's beefy big brother. Now, again, this printer is kind of too big to bring up here right now, but I want to talk about the Creality CR10 Max. Honestly, this thing should just be called the CR10 Pro Max because it's this thing on steroids. The same touchscreen, the same type of bed, all the same gear and equipment, it's just bigger. How much bigger? The standard Creality CR10S or CR10S Pro V2 is a 300 by 300 by 400 build volume, where the CR10 Max is 450 by 450 by 470. Might be a little hard to see, but that's the size difference of this printer. It's just bigger, but with bigger comes slower. You're not going to be able to print at the same speeds you would on this because this is a lot of bed to move, so you're going to need to slow things down. Now, a few of you might be thinking of printers like the CR10 S4 and S5. While the S4 was actually way more surprising than I thought it would be, it's 400 by 400 by 400, get it? S4. It still needs a couple upgrades, but it worked pretty reliably out of box. However, for not that much more, you can find an already upgraded CR10 Max that's going to give you a bigger build volume and just kind of work a little bit better. Now, there's the CR10 S5, and unfortunately, some people do swear by this thing and more power to them, but generally this thing's a piece of junk. Creality really tried to cut corners on the market and just give everybody a massive printer without doing any of the research. They just took a standard CR10, the same thing I started with and built this on, and just made it a bigger bed without any of the supporting features. The supporting features being a better belt system, a better bed, a auto leveling system, a metal extruder, supports and braces, all the things the CR10 Max actually has stopped from the factory. They did learn their lesson from the S5, they dialed it down just a little bit, but very few people are gonna miss the 50 by 50 by 30 millimeter difference between the CR10 S5 and the CR10 Max. Honestly, usually the only people who complain about it are people who build uh, Star Wars droids like R2-D2s because those fit perfectly on the CR10 S5. And they're just a little bit too big for that. But aside from that, you're gonna be able to print some massive stuff on this. I printed this entire Captain America shield in two pieces on my CR10 Max. I would have had to have cut this into four to six pieces to print it on something like this and just look at it, it's pretty awesome. So with that, let's move on to my final and probably the best 3D printer I've ever used. The FL Sun Super Racer. Now I'm gonna be honest, when this company reached out to me uh, over a year ago when I lived back in England, I had never heard of them like a lot of people. However, ever since I built it, got it running and started printing with it, it has been the absolute best 3D printer I have ever used. If you guys wanna see a much better review video for it on my other channel, I'll link it right here or down below, go check that out. 
However, on this channel, I want to finally share this with you, not in a actual build tutorial or video. Now, this isn't my favorite printer. I still like the Pro V2 because of its size, but this is a very special type of Delta printer. While it looks really tall, this is the max build height. This print head can't go any higher than that, so you are limited by space and you are limited by a little bit of the way the print can move. It can still print pretty big. As you can see by this part right here, it gets tall and it was even able to print my entire head. It can still be a little limiting, but when I say it's the best one I've ever used. I'm not kidding. It has never failed me. Literally, I haven't had a fail on it if it wasn't my fault. I'm talking about, again, not enough supports. I didn't clean the bed or maybe my filament snapped. It hasn't just failed on me. It has absolutely the best print resume feature I have used on any single printer. And I'm even counting the Chitty Techs and the Flash Forges and the more expensive printers I've used. Aside from the color change when swapping filaments, it's perfect. It didn't move at all. And it is fast because it is a Delta printer, because the bed doesn't move and because it can move so freely in this XYZ direction, there's a different name for it. It's like math and all that fun stuff. It can go so fast. For those of you who understand the terminology, which if you're getting into this, it'll take you a little bit of time, but this thing just sits at hundred millimeters a second. I have no issues printing at that on the regular. I actually printed this entire Stormbreaker handle in three different pieces, three separate times, so nine prints total in about a four to five days span. And again, it's some of the best quality I've ever got out of any printer. And the best part about all of that, I didn't calibrate it. I didn't do E-steps. I didn't do any type of PID. I didn't, I barely had to do a bed leveling sequence. It actually gives you a bed leveling sensor that you plug in, let it level once, and then you're good to go. I've plugged this thing in one time since I bought it almost a year ago, and I haven't had to re-level it since. Now between this and the Pro V2, you're gonna need to really pick those size limitations and restrictions. While the Pro V2 will get you a little bit of a larger print, and I think does boast some better features, and I personally like it more, it's really hard to justify only going for that when this thing exists. And what's even better is FL Sun is sending me their new version, which is supposed to be 400 by 400. It's supposed to be even bigger than this, and I cannot wait to test that thing. This type of printer also builds in, I wanna say about half an hour. It is mostly pre-assembled, but there is a good amount of nuts and bolts you have to put into it, but it's super simple to build. So that's really it guys. In summation, if you want a printer just to get your feet wet and you're looking for the best way to learn the hobby and not break the bank, the Creality Ender 3. If you want what I think is the best bang for your buck and my personal favorite 3D printer that's gonna give you size, quality, and reliability, the CR-10S Pro V2. And if you really just wanna get the best printer I've ever used, uh, the FL Sun Super Racer. This thing's just great. Now you can definitely apply anything I've talked about to the vast majority of 3D printers there on the market. There are tons of other reviews. And like I said, there's tons of printers I haven't tested out yet. But I have no personal problem recommending these three printers to you guys because I have used and abused them for a long time now and they have just been great. If you found anything I talked about during this video helpful, please consider subscribing to the channel. It helps out. And don't forget to ring that notification bell. This way you stay up to date on all the videos I have coming out. Cosplay tutorials, build tutorials, 3D printing, all that fun stuff. And while you're at it, if you can go check out my second channel, Frankly Reviewed, this way you can stay up to date on all the 3D printing reviews I have coming out as well. And as always, if you have any comments, questions, concerns, you disagree with something I said, or you have some input of your own, please drop some comments down below. I do read all of them, guys, and I try to respond to as many as possible. I have considered doing an updated individual review view of a lot of these printers, like the Pro V2, after having it for almost three years. And I actually realized I've never done a normal Ender 3 review, so I might throw that on the second channel as well. We'll see. I will also link some good places to buy these printers down below. If I have any discount codes for the time, I'll give them to you. Some of them may be affiliate links, some may not be, but this way you can at least see what the names and titles and prices of these printers are. So go check those out down below, and I'll do my best to help you guys out. So that's going to be a wrap for this video, guys. As always, thank you so much for watching, and you have a good day. Oh my God. I do hope you guys appreciate the absolute mess I made of my room and my print room trying to get all these printers up here. Uh, it's a disaster. I wish you guys could see the floor. Oh boy. But it was time to make something like this and uh, there's no real blooper here. I guess I can tell you a joke or something. Um, why did the bike fall over? It was too tired. <gasps> Wee!